Welcome. On this video, we will be discussing the idea of triangle congruency using the side angle side postulate. So, what does the side angle side postulate says? Well, here we have two triangles. Our objective is to show that these two triangles are congruent to each other. In the past, we had to check that all sides are congruent to all the sides of the other figure, and all the angles are congruent to all the angles of the other figure. That's a lot of work. So the side angle side postulate, you can see it as a shortcut to show that two triangles are congruent to each other. Let's state that postulate. So what this postulate says is that given two triangles, if a pair of congruent angles, which in this case, let's make that A and D, so let's say that these two angles are congruent. If that pair of congruent angles is adjacent to two pair of congruent sides, which in this case, let's make AB to be congruent to the E and AC to be congruent to the F. If this is the scenario that we have here, where you have a congruent angle within two congruent sides, then that's enough information for us to conclude that triangle ABC is congruent to a triangle DEF. So we don't have to check that all sides are congruent to each other and all angles are congruent to each other. When it comes to triangles, if we have this combination of a side being congruent to a side, and in the middle, we have an angle congruent to another angle, and then follow by a side being congruent to another side, notice the acronym that we have here, side, angle, side, and side, angle, side. If this is a situation that we have, then we can conclude that these two triangles are congruent to each other. Now let's visualize this looking at the following illustration. Within this illustration, notice that we have two congruent sides and a congruent angle. And the way that the figures are being defined right now, we can see that those two triangles are congruent. Like they look the same, copy and paste. What we want to see is that regardless of the length of those congruent sides and the congruent angle, we're still going to end up with a congruent triangle. So let's make the length in blue a little bit bigger. So if we make the length in blue a little bit bigger, we have a bigger triangle. But notice that if we make the triangle on the right to be bigger as well, we still end up with a different triangle, but they're still congruent to each other. They look exactly the same. And even if we change the angle between them, we made it a little bit smaller. Those two triangles, they still look identical. They're still congruent. Even if we make that very, very, very small, a very small angle, or even we make that a very large angle. Doesn't matter what the dimension is, we still end up with same triangles. And the same goes with the leg in the bottom. Like if we make it bigger or if we make it smaller, I'm still ending up with congruent triangles. So as long as the congruency follows this order of side, angle, side, it doesn't matter how big or how they small are, the triangles are still going to be congruent to each other. One thing that I would like to point out is that the order matters. Because notice that in the triangle on the left, we go from side to an angle and from an angle to a side. So we have side, angle, side. And that's the same order that we have with the other triangle. So a congruent side followed by a congruent angle and a congruent angle followed by a congruent side. Side, angle, side. Now, Let's put this idea into practice. Let's take a look at an example here. In this example, what we want to do is we want to state if it's possible to use the side angle side postulate to conclude that the following triangles are congruent to each other. Let's take a look at example A. If we take a look at the diagram here, let's start looking at what information can we gather from this diagram. Notice that MN has one mark, and notice that QP has one mark, so that implies 
that those two sides are congruent to each other. Notice that angle M is 90 degrees. Notice that angle Q is 90 degrees as well. So we can see that they are congruent to each other. And LM has two marks and NQ has two marks. That implies that they are congruent to each other. So here we have two congruent sides and one congruent angle. This is a good candidate. Let's check if the order follows. So LM is congruent to NQ. So this side is congruent to this side. And then we have an angle followed by another congruent angle. And then we have this other side being congruent to this other side. Notice that the order follows. We have a side followed by an angle, followed by a side, side angle side. And that's the same that we have for our second triangle. It's side followed by an angle, followed by a side. So notice that both triangles have this combination of side angle sides to be congruent. So this is enough information for us to conclude that these two triangles are congruent. So that's my conclusion. Triangle LMN, LMN is congruent to a triangle NQP. And the reason behind it, it's because of side angle side congruent partially. Let's take a look at the triangle in example B. We can see that we have two triangles. Here we have triangle W, Z, X, and we have triangle Z, Y, X. And we want to see if those two triangles are congruent to each other. So let's see what information do we have within this diagram. Well, I know that W, X has one mark and Z, Y has one mark, so they're congruent to each other. Angle X is definitely congruent to angle X. So that seems to be the case. And notice that ZX, that's a side that both triangles share in common. Now, if we concentrate one triangle at a time, then we can see that ZWX, it definitely has two congruent sides and one congruent angle. And Z, Y, X has two congruent sides and one congruent angle. So perhaps this will be a good candidate to use side angle side. But let's check the order. Let's check the order. On the triangle on the left hand side, we have side angle side. So this is good for the triangle on the left. So what is the order that we have for the triangle on the right? We have side, side, angle. So we cannot use side, angle, side. They do not follow the same order. Even though we have two congruent sides and one congruent angle within both triangles, the order does not follow. So what we can say here is that we cannot use side angle side postulate because the order is not of the form of side angle side. So even though you have two congruent sides and one congruent angle, we have to make sure that this order gets followed if you want to use side angle side. And the order is of side followed by a congruent angle followed by a congruent side. Now let's finish up this lesson by looking at one proof. So let's go back to this idea of proving statements. So let's see, what do we have in this proof? Well, we have two triangles, ABC and CDA, which again, ABC is this triangle right here. And CDA is this triangle right here. And we want to see if those two triangles are congruent to each other. So let's start by stating the givens, because that's always, that's how we always want to start our proofs. So what are some givens? We know that BC 
is congruent to the A. And in addition, we also know that BC is parallel to the A. And again, that's a given. Let's see how is that shown within my diagram. So here we have BC and the A. They are congruent to each other. And we have that BC is parallel to the A. Now, another thing that I can see within this diagram, if I take a look at these two triangles, so these are the two triangles that I want to concentrate on. And let me put it in here. So these are the two triangles that I want to concentrate on. I can see that AC, it's a segment that is present on both triangles. So I can say that AC is congruent to itself. So we can say that AC is congruent to AC. And the reason behind it is because this is a reflexive property. So reflexive property. And let's pause here for a second. Because what we have so far is that this side is congruent to the side. And we know that this side is congruent to itself. Well, what if BC is parallel to AC? If that is the case, we can think of AC as being a transversal. And if AC is a transversal, then notice that this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here. How so? They are alternate interior angles. So now we know that angle CAD is congruent to angle BCA. And the reason behind it, they're alternate interior angles. And this is something that you always want to use when it comes to this kind of problems in here. Anytime that you are being given parallel lines, you want to think about, can I identify corresponding alternate interior or alternate exterior? That's always going to be a hint. So if you see parallel lines, then try to identify those angles. We always want to use them. So now let's pause here for a second. Do we have enough information for us to use side angle side? Well, let me just erase this figure and let's put everything that we know so far. I know that BC is congruent to AC, AD, sorry. And we know that AC is congruent to itself. And we have just shown that angle C is congruent to angle A. So if I put those two triangles and let me restate them here. So here we have these two triangles. And here's my other triangle here. So notice that now we can show that these two triangles are congruent due to side angle side. How so? Here we have a side followed by an angle and followed by a side. And notice that the one on the bottom, here we have a side followed by an angle, followed by a side. So we have side, angle, side here. And we have side, angle, side here as well. So we have stated those sides. We have stated those angles. The order follows. So now we can conclude that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. And the reason behind it is because of side angle side postulate theorem. Hello. If you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.